Tonight, from Wembley Stadium in London, England, it's the NFL International Series on EA Sports. see Trevor Lawrence and the Jacksonville Jaguars taking on Russell Wilson and the Denver Broncos. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. Coming up, we've got a good matchup on tap between the Denver Broncos and the Jacksonville Jaguars. And hi again, everybody, alongside my partner, Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, when you and I were going through our final run-throughs at breakfast, we kept thinking tonight we're going to get to see a couple of very good passing offenses. And we're talking about both sides having multiple receivers that can have an impact on this game. It's not just one guy that's going to make all the plays. If you take him away, maybe number two, number three, they make the big plays that impact who wins the game. Time for our first look at the Denver offense and, of course, the new face of the Broncos, nine-time Pro Bowler while in Seattle. Russell Wilson. The Denver Broncos knew exactly what they wanted when they acquired Russell Wilson. They wanted to bring in a quarterback who was durable, consistent, and a proven winner to take a talented roster back to the postseason. And Russell Wilson, he was all of those things in Seattle. One losing record in 10 seasons, missed only three games in that time, and made nine Pro Bowls. That certainly appeared to be a play call where they were just trying to make second down, second and short. I think they thought the coverage was off a little bit more than it was. Nice job there pressing up on it and forcing the incompletion. It'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. And they'll look to avoid an early three and out here on third and four. Now it's Wilson. And that is incomplete, but a penalty flag coming in. This could be a first down. So pass interference to call. That's going to set him up with a first down. And if it's a bang-bang play, maybe the flag stays in the official's pocket, but instead, he definitely impeded the receiver's right to catch the football. The official's letting the players know how the game's going to be called here in the first quarter. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Here's Wilson. That one's complete to Tomlinson. And he's going to be marked down just inside the 35. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. High throw, but the catch is made. And he's brought down here just outside of the 20. Pretty solid opening drive here, Charles. They've worked in the run game, the pass game, just steadily getting yards, and now they've got it inside the red zone here with an opportunity. And the only thing they don't have so far is points. But the way that they're moving the ball now, that shouldn't take much longer. And they've established a great balance so far, running, passing, doing what they want on offense. From the 16, Wilson dancing to his left. And they've got this down to about the 12-yard line. That's an early scramble that can be viewed positively by either side. From the offensive point of view, it begins to establish it as a possibility to keep it on certain plays. And defensively, they avoided giving up a huge play in one of their first tests in containing a quarterback on the run. But he has the first down before he's tackled at the five. Give him seven yards on the play as they do pick up the third down conversion. 
A stop there on third. They could have held him to three on this opening drive. Now they have to bow their necks on first and goal. And if I'm looking at this from the offense's point of view, that's a big-time pickup right there. And I'd go right at him with another momentum play. I'd go quickly and attack him because right now... And that is caught. Touchdown, Denver. Eric Sober, a five-yard touchdown. And the Broncos will claim the early lead as they're on the board first here tonight. They got to love that. Nine-play drive results in six points. That means they're doing the dictating. That means that they've described how the game's going to go. They're playing at their tempo, at their pace. If you're on the other side of the ball, if you're playing defense, defense is not methodical. They've got to go in there and shake things up and create a little havoc. Extra point from McManus is good. And that makes the score 7-0. Touchdown. Here's McManus now to kick it away. And no return here for Agnew, so they'll bring it out, start the drive at the 25. The Jacksonville's offense trots out here for the first time, and all eyes go right to number 16. Now in his second season as the team's face of the franchise, Trevor Lawrence. For everyone who expected the highly talented Trevor Lawrence, the champion of the Jaguars, to instant success last season, well, they got a little bit of reality check. Despite the struggles, though, he still took on a major leadership role within the locker room and among the team. He also flashed some of his considerable potential on the field, particularly in a defiant Week 18 win over Indianapolis that knocked the Colts out of the playoffs. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. All told, it's an even 30 and a first down. One thing that's great about watching him run, Charles, he doesn't hesitate. He got to the left side of his own line and just went. So there's two ways to look at that. One, just absolutely unconcerned, just takes off and goes. But more the latter, I think, which is he has absolute confidence in the guys in front of him, the guys doing the blocking for him. He just takes it and goes with abandon. On second and 12, Lawrence. And the pass is intercepted. He was looking for Ingram. And the Broncos are going to have the short field here as they'll take over right at the 50. Well, that's a drive killer right there. Not a really confident throw either. This one was kind of up for grabs, and it's going to come down the hands of the wrong team. So now the second drive offensively coming up for the Denver Broncos. They'll have good field position at midfield following the turnover as they start with the first down here. So good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 right at the 50-yard line. After the interception, here's Wilson. Looking left sideline, incomplete. The coverage was good, but I just wonder if they absolutely fooled the quarterback on that play. I think he was expecting something else. Ended up with nowhere to throw the football successfully. On second down, they'll run with Gordon. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. So from second and long, now we go to third and very manageable. Yeah, they love that phrase, don't they? Because as an offensive coordinator, you can keep people a little bit off balance in guessing because you don't have to throw it. You can come back with a strong run game if you want to. And if you're in four down territory, that really opens things up for you. Only a yard there on the keeper, but that's all he needed. First down. I don't know about you, but I like this call. Third and inches, and instead of worrying about getting it back to a running back and maybe there's some penetration from the defensive front, just go ahead and take it, move forward, and pick up the first down. And as we say often, shows confidence in your offensive line. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Well, they gave up a few yards there, but all in all, I think it's a pretty nice job defensively against the Jets sweep. If they don't slow him up, he might take it to the house. So they'll take that play every time on the defensive side of the ball. Play action. It's Wilson. Man open. He's got it complete to Cortland Sutton. And they'll work this down inside the 30. Defense. 
So give them the yardage on the completion and also tack on 15 more. If you get that hand up there, you've got to let go immediately or just not close the hand at all. He didn't, gave it a tug, and that was easy for the officials to see. And he's going to work this one down to about the five. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. On the counter, here's Gordon. And this time, not as successful as he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Not enough there for a first. No gain, as a matter of fact. And it leaves them at third and one. This will be play number seven on the drive. Third and a yard. Here's the sneak with Wilson. And they'll get him down here at about the five-yard line. He needed two. He only got one on the sneak, and that's going to lead us to a fourth and one. The kick by McManus is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So, Charles, they get to them with their first turnover of the game and then make it hurt a little bit extra with a field goal. And anytime you give the ball up, what's the first thing a coach tells his defense? Don't let them score off of this. You've got to put out the fire. In fact, in 2021, that's what one NFL coach turned his defense. The firemen, go out there, guys, and don't let them put some points on the board. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. This one complete to Christian Kirk. They'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Here's Lawrence to throw. And one more time, here's Kirk. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. It's a gain of 13 for number 13, and it gives him a first down. ETN up the middle, and he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground, but I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos 40. Here's Lawrence. And his throw is going to be incomplete. This could be the start of a nice stand from this defense now after getting walked backwards on this drive. Come through with another one here, and you have them staring at a third and long, and that puts the defense in a position to dictate to the offense. On second down, a run with ETN. And some room to maneuver. On a nice burst there as he'll take this inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. And they'll throw on first down with Lawrence. Finds his tight end, Ingram. And he's brought down here just outside of the 20. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw, being chased out left. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. He'll get five out of the scramble, hit second down. Now Lawrence to throw, and down he goes. Pressure gets him back at the 14. D.J. Jones, the defensive tackle, getting in there for a loss of five. On third down, Lawrence looking left side of him. He's got a man. That's Jones. And the Jags are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. And this is an offense in need of getting a few good things to happen. Here's one right here. They've had their share of struggles in key moments, but that's a nice throw. And he'll take this one in for a Jags touchdown. Travis Etienne 
taking it in from two yards out. And the Jaguars have cut it back within a score. Extra point by Patterson, up and good. And that'll cut it to three at 10-7. After the touchdown, Cook now to kick this one away. Taken in at the three. A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. And the football going back over to the Denver Broncos. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to, because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize. Like going to the county fair, you don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. There's Wilson to throw. It'll find Sutton on the right side complete. And he is going to lose yardage here. On third down, Wilson. Yeah, this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. 42-yard punt, six on the return. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up, first and 10. At their own 28-yard line. On play action, Lawrence. And this one into the hands of Ingram downfield. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. First and ten, it's Lawrence. Complete to Jones. And he'll be brought down inside the 40-yard line. 10-7 our score after one right here on EA Sports. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Straight ahead, ETN. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage. And the pass is intercepted. He was looking for Ingram. And the Broncos are going to take possession of the football. And that's now the second time he's picked up a pass here in the first half alone. Again, another great read defensively, and you just see him get in the right position to make the play and get his guys the football back. Throwing now, Wilson on first down. He finds his man complete. That's Beck, and he'll be brought down just shy of the 40. Good sure hands there from a guy not accustomed to catching a whole lot of passes, but how about the way he was able to pull that one in and pick up good yardage? Here's a give up the middle. It's Gordon. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. It's nice every now and then in this game not to see people overthink it. Just hand it to the old reliable guy. Let him pick up the first down. Well, throw on first down with Wilson. And Sutton hauls it in over the middle. And he'll be marked down at about the 26-yard line. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. They go play action with Wilson. He finds his man complete. It's back, and he's going to get this down near the 25. Play action. Now Wilson. And that is incomplete. 
They're going for a receiver there. Already has one touchdown of this first half. A second one not to be. I like where their headspace is, though. I mean, I really like the thought process, right? You got a guy who's already scored one, right? You want to go back to him, continue the hot hand, and make them a jump. Touchdown! Russell Wilson with two first-half touchdown passes. And they're able to add on to their advantage. As a general rule, quarterbacks don't want to lock in on a receiver before the ball is snapped. But in this case, based on the matchup he thought he was going to get, it was favorable for his tight end. He locked in on him early and found him for a touchdown. Now McManus to tack on the extra point. It's good to make it 17-7. A drive that time of six plays, and it culminates in a touchdown by the Broncos. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. And they'll bring it out to the 25 as Agnew elects for the touchback. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. As the offense comes out here, Charles, remember they threw the interception last time out, but they were moving the football down the field. Looked like they were going to have a sustained drive that ended in points, but then the pick ensued. And because of that, there's no way you can call the last drive a success. Yes, there are things to build on because they found some play calls at work. Now they've got to build another drive and find a way to avoid the turnover the plague did on the last one. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. A shotgun snap and a give to ETN. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. 59 yards rushing now on eight carries for him so far. So a first and 10 now in Denver territory at the 49-yard line. Lawrence, now this is ETN on the draw. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. So after the loss of a yard, they'll look to push forward here on second down and 11. Lawrence will throw. Over the middle, he's got his tight end, Ingram. And they'll get this down to the 42-yard line. A good chance this is four down territory if they're unable to convert. But right now looking at a third and three. Well, they hit him in the backfield, and he will not escape. And that is not going to get it done. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. On fourth down, on is Logan Cook to punt. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. Set to take over. The Broncos offense trots back out. The offense running out, and they are charged up, ready to go after reaching the end zone on their last drive. And normally I'd warn against getting complacent just because they scored the last time out. But I don't think there's any worries with this group right now. This is a hungry group, and they want to keep building off of their last drive. Now they just want the officials to hurry up and place the ball so they can snap it and get back to work. Second and ten now, Wilson. And here is a leaping catch. He pulled it in. That one covers 24 yards. It's a first down. Cortland Sutton has shown plenty of times he's a big-time player capable of making the plays that you need to be a wide receiver one in this league. Now his goal is to return to his 2019 Pro Bowl four, 776 yards in 2021. He picks up a first down there. Now Gordon on first down. And he works his way forward to pick up four yards there, second down. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. And that is going to be pulled in one-handed. Wow. It's a gain of 35. Big plays are starting to become the trend here in this first half, and everything that they've tried has worked. And there's another example right there. Yeah. 
So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Now a 10th carry for Melvin Gordon. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Denver score. Melvin Gordon, a 16-yard touchdown run. And his guy's now an extra point away from taking a three-score lead. Now McManus for the extra point. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. The drive summary that time, five plays. And it's capped off by a touchdown run coming from Melvin Gordon. And no return here for Agnew, so they'll bring it out, start the drive at the 25. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Play action. It's Lawrence. And that one drops down, incomplete. Good coverage there, forced the ball free, and it's second down. <laughs> to throw once more on second and 10, Lawrence. Oh, that's the third interception for Lawrence. Picked off by Kwan Williams. And the Broncos are gonna take possession of the football. Three first half interceptions now, and Charles, you'd have to think a fair amount of concern is developing over there on that sideline. And there should be, because essentially, he's been a little loose and possibly reckless with the football here in the first half. Now, maybe it's not all on him, but still, three interceptions. That puts the entire team in jeopardy. So, the play caller from here on out, got to design some throws for him that he can complete, keep it away from the defense, and try and get him back on track. And he'll take this one down to the 36. Three yards is half of what they needed. Now can they get the other three here on third down? Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. Wilson now to throw on third down. Open man is Gordon complete. And he will have a Broncos first down by about three yards or so as they wind up getting seven there on third and four. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moved. And they're right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. They go play action now. Wilson. He's going to let it go deep for the end zone. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked off by Tyson Campbell. And the Jaguars are going to get the football here as the ball will come out to the 20. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. Now ETN to start the drive. And he'll work this forward for about three. It's second down. Now second and seven from the 23. And now whistles and a flag. And I think we got to jump here. Jumping all the way from the outside, maybe getting a little early start in the corner blitz. And the only time it makes sense to get that penalty is exactly as you described. Otherwise, he should never get that penalty. On second down, ETN once more. Slipped one tackle, but no more as he's knocked to the deck behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard on the play, so now they need three yards on third down. They'll run with ETN. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. 66 yards for him on the ground so far tonight as he has been terrific in this first half. And now they'll throw it with Lawrence. That one complete downfield to Kirk. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this second quarter. Now Lawrence on first down. 
And for the fourth time tonight, it's an interception. Picked off by Josie Jewell. And the Broncos are going to get the football here at their own 40-yard line. Well, we heard all week that they were going to put the football in the air a lot. The problem is that is now four interceptions, Charles, that he has thrown in this first half. How do you treat a situation? What do you say to your quarterback right now? Boy, that's an interesting question because a lot of it depends on the head coach and the people making the decisions. You have to know your quarterback and know if he's mentally tough enough to have a chance to turn it around. Or is he a guy that maybe you've seen enough and it's time to go to the backup? But right now what you're rooting for is your defense to help keep you in the game, to give him an opportunity to get back on track. Sliding out of the pocket. And the tackle going to be made at the 38. They made a nice effort to stick him with a loss for that play, but it's going to take more than that to keep him from advancing the ball. Should be an entertaining battle anytime he tucks and runs over the second half of this contest. They'll run it up the middle now. Gordon. Give him 14 yards there and a Denver first down. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Now they'll throw it with Wilson. This is Hamler on the crossing route. He's got it. And he will be brought down at about the six-yard line. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. Well, this is a defense that's definitely on their heels now because they gave up the running play for good yardage one play ago. Now the pass here sets its offense up first and goal. They're going to have to dig in strong. And he is into the end zone for a Denver touchdown. K.J. Hamler, a six-yard touchdown run. And the Broncos are able to add on to their first half lead. McManus now for the extra point. And the lead is now 24. So that drive spanned five plays, and it's capped off by a touchdown run of six yards. Fielded just outside the goal line. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. And Charles, we'll see what they can do here. Not a ton of time left, but enough certainly to get points out of this drive. And they need them right now because they're trailing. Yeah, and this is a, oh, a contested ball here, and it's going to be caught. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. Now you've got to hustle your guys to the line and get them set. He's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Kareem Jackson. And you have to wonder, Charles, a game like this, five interceptions, what does this do to the psyche of a young quarterback? But based on the fact that he's still out there and he threw a fifth interception, I'm wondering if his head coach believes that he's really strong mentally and wants him to play through it. Because otherwise, you need to get him out and fight another day because this could leave lasting damage if he keeps throwing interceptions. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. He's going to fire one deep, middle of the field. And that will be incomplete. Try to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. The secondary has been roasted in this first half, but they get a measure of revenge there. Nice play on the deep ball. Yeah, they're going to need a few more plays like that in order to get their confidence fully back. But that's one step in the proper direction. And a dangerous throw there as that's knocked down and incomplete. Fourth down, Corliss Waitman now on to punt. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. A 40-yard punt, one yard on the return, and control of the football switching hands with very little time remaining until the half. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. And the pressure gets to Lawrence, and he'll go down. 
And this offense going to elect to burn a timeout with five seconds remaining in quarter number two. Final play of the half. It's Lawrence. Looking downfield for Jones. And just not enough on the throw there. Down around his feet and incomplete. So we've come to halftime after a very one-sided beginning to this one. As it's time now to send you back stateside to Orlando, Florida, and check in with Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. As they say here in London, all to play for as we are back underway in the second half. And they'll bring it out to the 25 as Agnew elects for the touchback. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. And you have to think, Charles, down three scores already. They need to play an almost perfect second half to have a solid chance. And that absolutely starts with finding some way to put together a touchdown drive here. They need to be smart fast, efficient, get the ball to the end zone and do it again multiple times in order to have a chance to win this game. Throwing on second and long. Lawrence, screenplay, here's ETN. And he's got some space here. And he goes out of bounds just shy of the 45. 27 yards there, a first down. Running out of the gun with ETN. And he'll get what he can up the middle. Three yards. So that'll bring up second down. And the last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Now Lawrence. And completes it to Kirk over the middle. And they'll get him down on the other side of midfield. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. And he will have a Jaguars first down. They needed three. He doubled that. He got six. 75 yards for him on the ground now. He has been a tough man to bring down all night. Throwing now Lawrence on first down. This complete to Jones. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and that's going to bring up second down. Looking to throw, Lawrence. Completes it to Evan Ingram. Down inside the 10. Touchdown, Jaguars. Evan Ingram, 38 yards. And the Jaguars are able to make some inroads here to that deficit. For a big tight end, he can sure move like a slot receiver when he gets a head of steam going. And as a defensive back, you've got a big decision to make when he's moving like that. Lawrence going to look to throw for it. Eluding the pressure right. And he's got it for the two-point conversion. So they tack on a pair more here to narrow that deficit a bit further. But it's still an uphill battle from here, that's for sure. But that makes it a two-score game. And now we see why teams practice so much on the two-point conversion, why you have more than one play ready. Because you may need multiples to throw out a ball game. There's a great example right there. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. So now a look at the Broncos as they head back out there for their first possession of the second half. And they were terrific in the first half, built up a sizable lead. It's just been cut into a bit following the opening drive score on the other side. But this is a unit that has to be itching to get the football again. You can say that again. They've got to be pretty eager because, let's face it, they've had to sit through halftime, then sit on the sidelines and watch that drive. So you can bet that they're saying, let's get on with this. we got to go out there and get some more points. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Wilson. And, oh, he's unable to hold on to that defensively. A potential game changer, but it falls incomplete. Go! 
Off the play fake, here's Wilson. That's complete to the tight end, Saubert. And he will have a Broncos first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I got a kick out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. Touchdown, Broncos. Jerry Judy, 63 yards. As his guys are able to push that lead out a bit further. This offense, they were dynamic in the first half. The halftime break, that didn't slow them down at all. Big strike here in the third quarter. It's almost as if they were saying, it's not just our skill in the first half is getting this done, it's confidence as well. And confidence has taken over this game in a big way. How about these strikes that we're seeing? After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. And no return here for Agnew, so they'll bring it out, start the drive at the 25. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. From the 29, Lawrence. He'll get that underneath ETN. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. On first down, Lawrence. And now here is another interception. Picked off by Justin Simmons. And the Broncos are going to take possession here at their own 47-yard line. Well, still down quite a bit here, several scores. But, yeah, at least that's a start, Charles, getting the interception here. And look, we're still in the third quarter, so this thing not done yet. You're right about that, Brandon. This defense, they haven't quit on this game. They stayed with it and got an interception and handed the ball back to their offense. And what you wonder about is the team that just threw that interception They've got to be careful about developing a sense of complacency and thinking this game is over. And he's going to be taken down right at the 40-yard line. So first and 10, and if they score on this drive, might have to start digging in our second-half blowout material. The busy night continues for Gordon as he gets it here. A beautiful spin and room to run. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. 121 yards rushing for him now as his big night continues. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Here's Wilson. He's going to drop this one down to Gordon. And they're going to be set up now with a ball at the 13-yard line. And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shot. And it's intercepted at the goal line. And the Jags are going to take possession here. It's a touchback, and they'll take over at the 20-yard line. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And he's going to get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. Operating from the 27 now. Here's second and three. Now Lawrence. Open man is Kirk. Complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. First and 10, it's ETN. And not able to break away this time as they're going to stop him right around the line of scrimmage. Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. Lawrence. That's going to be caught by Kirk. So just three yards on the completion there. And that's going to set up a tough third and nine. And they'll come to the line here needing nine yards to pick up the first. Here's Lawrence. And Ingram holds. 
rolls it in. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos' 32-yard line. Out of the gun, it's Lawrence. Jones has it. And he's going to be taken down at the 28-yard line. And he went in route there from the slot for the completion. Love how he runs his routes because it's all setting up your defender. Give him a little something one way, take it the other way. Head and shoulder fake. Sometimes you make one step to the outside and break it inside. Really well run route. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. And to throw again is Lawrence. And my goodness, another interception. Picked off by Justin Simmons. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. The number seven, usually lucky here, not for him. Seven picks he's thrown in this game. That's only happened six times since 1960. And I know that the most recent time it happened, the guy who threw him, he won a Heisman Trophy in college, so sometimes you just have a lousy game. Doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad career, but when you're talking about one game, seven, you're right, not lucky at all. Yeah, Ty Detmer the last to do it in 2001 to throw seven picks. On second and seven, Wilson. Incomplete, but a penalty flag is down in the backfield. Let's get the call. Quinn Miners, third round pick in 2021, called for the penalty. Now they face a second and long following the holding penalty. Now a handoff. This is Gordon. And he's going to be taken down shy of the 10 right around the 9-yard line. Three yards on the pick up there, but they've only got it back to third and ten. Well, praise has to go to the guys on the offensive line because they've had a very nice, productive day running the football. How about that poor defensive line? They've been knocked around the entire game, and while they slowed them down on that run, can they continue to do so because they haven't had much success throughout this ball game? And that is too far out in front. He couldn't haul it in. Incomplete. The Broncos send out their punter now as he's on here to punt it away. That'll be a 41-yard punt, just one yard on the return. And that will come the offense as they take over. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. As this offense takes the field against CD, remember last drive, they were moving the football, but then they threw that costly interception, so we'll see if they can right the ship here on this drive. And doesn't that just sum up football? We see it all the time, don't we? The defense goes from losing the battle to making a huge play and stealing the momentum. So you know they're riding high right now, and they're ready to challenge this offense and that quarterback one more time. And we'll see if the offense is up for that challenge here as things start to get more interesting here in this second half. On third down, Lawrence flushed out right. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. Decent gain on the scramble to six, but now it's fourth. Here's Logan Cook now as he'll punt it away for the second time. And problem spreading to the punt team now. This one goes all the way into the end zone on the fly, so that'll come back to the 20. And coming out now, the Broncos. And now you've got the clock winding down here in the third quarter. Your three scores to the good. What's your approach on this drive? Too early to fully commit to playing the clock game. Yet at the same time, you're also not going pell-mell like you would in two-minute offense. This is what NFL offenses call four-minute football. Take the clock out of the game a little bit, wind it down, but at the same time, keep advancing the ball down the field. And they're able to get this one across the 35. That one going for a gain of 11 to add a Bronco first down. You know Melvin Gordon is very effective getting to the perimeter, but being a former University of Wisconsin Badger means you know how to run the ball inside and with power as well. I also like the fact that he's a weapon in the passing game. Had as many as 58 catches in a season. Throw it to him in space and look out. And he puts his head down and gets up to the 42 for a gain of about six. 
Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. The offense on third down tonight, five out of nine thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. And Wilson's going to be intercepted a third time. It's Devin Lloyd with a pick. Well, that interception at least offers them a glimmer of hope here in the fourth quarter. It certainly does if their offense goes out now and makes it pay off by getting into the end zone. And if it does, then they get a chance to get back out on the field and try and do it again. Maybe they can force that offense into more and more mistakes and give them a chance to get back into this one totally. Yeah, still a three-score hill to climb. We'll see if they can do it. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. Now Lawrence to throw. He completes it to Jones. And he's going to be marked down just inside the 35. A couple extra tight ends in the formation here as they line up third and two. Here's a give to ETN. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. And now it looks like they're going to be in the hurry up. A throw over the middle, taken in. And they're going to move it down inside the 25. From the 24, Lawrence. Right side, it's Manhurts, the tight end. And he's brought down inside the 20 at the 18-yard line. First and 10, and they've got three tight ends out there. A jumbo package look. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. That incompletion is not a surprise with the way that this one has gone, and the frustration of body language is evident everywhere. This team, they've really been put through the ringer in this one. And he gets it down close to the 10-yard line. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Another toe for ETN. And he picks up the first as he's able to take it down to the seven-yard line. And they're going to speed things up here. And they'll run with ETN. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop it right around the one. Five yards, a good run there, and now second and goal. Lawrence on the sneak. And this is not going to do it as he stopped at the two-yard line. The Jaguars going to go ahead and use their first timeout. It's just their first. They'll be down to two remaining as we step aside here in the fourth quarter. Now this likely a must-have third and goal. Well, look at this, a tight end carry. And he'll take this into the end zone. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Chris Manhurts taking it in from two yards out. And the Jaguars are able to cut into that deficit. They're going to keep it on the ground. And he's going to get into the end zone for two. And they're back within two scores. Down 15 now. Two scores down, two timeouts at their disposal. This is a critical onside kick. And they've got it. They recovered it. Wait, hang on now, though. There's a penalty flag down. Well, CD, you understand. I mean, they're so eager trying to get back in this game here in the fourth quarter, but they touched that one a little too early before it went 10 yards. Brandon, in such a high-stakes scenario, everyone's feeling the pressure on this play. The special teams coordinator, which one is he going to pick in terms of kicks? 
Can the kicker execute it? Can the team wait for 10 yards? So many variables, and in this case, they didn't get it done. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Throwing is Wilson. Yeah, this one almost intercepted. Far too loose with the football. Nearly a fourth pick of the ball game. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Now the handoff comes to Gordon. And a pretty nice tackle there, ranging up from his free safety spot as he'll stop him about a yard short. Give him eight yards on the carry, and that's going to bring up fourth down. This late in the game, Charles, I think you maybe seriously have to think about going for it. Especially where they are in terms of field position, because this is almost like no man's land. Might hurt your punter because there might not be enough space, maybe too far for your field goal kicker. I I'm like the old rule. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Possession is nine-tenths of winning the game. Go for it. Get the first down. Close it out. So that almost certainly the final piece to this puzzle, a three-score lead. I don't think there's any coming back from there. Well, you know, normally I'd get on you for giving up on the game right here, but I do think you're right in this case. This late in the game, two scores is tough enough. Three, I'm with you. That seems out of the question. And they'll bring it out to the 25 as Agnew elects for the touchback. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. Where we stand right now in the fourth quarter, this one pretty much out of reach. And, Charles, I know they're going to be disappointed about several things with this ball game, but the self-inflicted wounds, they've had several turnovers. You have to think that's going to be something they're going to discuss heavily in the film session in the coming days. You're absolutely right about that, partner, because they're going to have to sit in that film room and watch every error that they made and figure out how to not do it in the future. And mentally, I think a lot of the guys are already starting to think about, okay, how do we put this behind us and get better for the next time out? This, they'll use as motivation. For the rest of the time that they play, to hopefully never be in this type of situation again. Oh, I thought he had that one, and that was nearly a big third down conversion to give this drive some life. Instead, they're on the spot and help separate the receiver from the ball. Giving to the big tight end on fourth. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. On the ground with a tight end. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. From the 44, Lawrence. And he's just throwing the ball up for grabs now. Fortunately, that one going to fall incomplete. I'm trying to decipher what's going on out there because I don't know if he's just getting bad reads. I don't know if the defense is confusing him. I don't know if he just has, you know, bad info and intel before he snaps the ball, but he's made some pretty bad decisions with the football lately. He has several bad decisions on the interceptions he's thrown, and frankly, that should have been another pick right there. On third down, here's ETN. On a determined run there as he's going to take this all the way down near the 40. <laughs> A little costly there. You wipe out the first down, you also move further back. No doubt about it. So you went from moving the sticks to them staying in the same spot, except for that one guy carrying the yard marker. He moves back farther. That caught by Manhurts. And they're going to get this to about the 44-yard line. They're going to hurry back to the line now. From the 44, Lawrence looking downfield for Jones. And that going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. That's coverage you'd expect to see in a tie game late. Not in a lopsided game like this. They are not letting up. The Jaguars on third down. Now they've converted seven times and could use another right now. This time they face a third and two. Yeah, this is only going to be a gain of two. He needed three. It's fourth and one. They're going to run this with a tight end. 
But no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. Fourth and inches in plus territory. That seemed like a prime spot to go for. It certainly did, and there's so many things that go into it. Are you too far away for a field goal, but not far away to punt it? Do you just feel like your offense is better? I just think in today's NFL, offense feels like it has to take care of the football, has to keep the ball, because scoring is up. You better maximize every possession. You trust your offense more than you trust your defense in today's league. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Inside the red zone here. They'll look to throw. And it's caught. Touchdown, Jaguars. Trevor Lawrence with a hook up to Marvin Jones. And the Jaguars have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. So a little bit of a letdown there defensively. I mean, look, you're still two scores to the good, CD, but things may be a little more uncomfortable than they had hoped. Yeah, if you kept them out of the end zone there, this game's over. You've locked the door on them. Instead, it's still open a little bit, and they've got a puncher's chance. And they are three for three on two-point conversions as he is into the end zone for the score. Two scores down, two timeouts at their disposal. This is a critical onside kick. And the Broncos are going to get the football. Well. Fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number, kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. Wilson's throw taken in by Sutton. And he'll be hauled down at about the 30-yard line. But when you're up by two scores in the fourth quarter and you're going to throw the football, expect to see a lot of man coverage because usually what comes along with man coverage is pressure. So if you're a play caller and you want to keep throwing the football, that's fine. Just make sure your offensive line understands they're going to get additional guys running at the quarterback. On second down, they'll run with Gordon. And he's able to motor his way down to the 16-yard line. A gain of 10 as they look to add on to this 10-point lead. So following the run by Gordon, here's first and 10. Play action. It's Wilson. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. And that's one of those plays where it's hard to keep two eyes on the football when you know the contact's coming let alone getting two hands around it, hugging it to your body, and absorbing the hit, even for those big tight ends who you would think could absorb that contact. Here's a give up the middle. It's Gordon. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts. It's just their first. They'll be down to two remaining as we step aside here in the fourth quarter. Third down, Wilson. That one's complete to Tomlinson. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. They'll get 11, but still a little short. Fourth down. A short game that doesn't get them the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before. The kick by McManus is good. And that will extend their lead even further. So that maybe not a knockout blow, but I, I suppose certainly every little bit helps when you're trying to salt one away in the fourth. Well, the possibility of being beaten by two late touchdowns or at least sent to overtime does exist. But time, definitely a big factor at this stage of the game, is in their favor. And no return here for Agnew, so they'll bring it out, start the drive at the 25. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. And as the offense begins another drive here, uh, pretty simple, Charles. They want to carbon copy what happened the last time out when they ended their drive in the end zone. You're right about... That partner sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? Just score again, but we know it's not that simple because 
We don't just make adjustments at halftime if you're a good football team. You spend that time on the sideline, you study what's on the notes and the tablets, and you make those adjustments prevent a repeat of the last drive. Series to series, the best teams, that's how they get it done. And yeah, we'll find out here soon enough whether those adjustments are enough defensively. Clock running under four to play now as they come up on first and ten. Meanwhile, Lawrence's throw here taken in by Ingram. And he'll be brought down inside the 40-yard line. Throwing again here, it's Lawrence. He targets Ingram for another grab. And he's going to be taken down at about the 33. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts. That's going to leave them with just one remaining here in this fourth quarter. Throwing again on second down. Lawrence over the middle complete. It's Arnold. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos' 17-yard line. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead. So that will leave them with no timeouts left. Still plenty of time on the clock. We'll see how that affects things here in this fourth quarter. Out to his left. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. Martin, I think he's got to be careful as he continues to try to extend plays because he's already been intercepted in this game. And the coverage, they continue to challenge all of his receivers downfield. The pass complete to Ingram on the crossing route. And out of bounds all the way down at the three. That gain of 15 gets him on the doorstep first and goal. Hasty. Will score. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Well, time to let those folks know who are tuning in looking for the late local news. And we may be a moment because we've got a game again. And partner, except for those on the West Coast where it'll be seen in its regular time, right? That's the way it works, doesn't it? But how about that? Big time drive right there. If they're going to have any chance, they needed a touchdown there. And they went right down the field and worked their way into the end zone. And he will get into the end zone as a two-point conversion is successful. And the lead is down to a field goal here in the fourth. After the touchdown, Cook now to kick this one away. And this will not be returned. It's a touchback, and they'll begin at the 25. The Broncos about set to go on offense. Their lead back down to one score after the touchdown a moment ago. First down's a must on this drive as they start out here first and ten. Meanwhile, Wilson's throw here into the hands of the receiver, Judy. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. They'll try and grind some clock with Gordon. And it's a good acceleration there as he's across midfield to the 48-yard line. Give him 14 yards there and a Denver first down. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. And now the question everyone's wondering, look at the clock. Late fourth quarter, do they put the ball in the air here on third? I don't. I run the football. And I tell my offensive line, no leakage up front. I don't want my running back hit as I hand the ball off to him. I don't want any type of an issue. But if I am going to throw it, quick throw out to the perimeter. Maybe one of my best receivers running a quick slant or something like that. So here now is Brandon McManus in a big spot. This to put him a touchdown and a two-point conversion up. And his kick is good. He got every bit of that one as it's good from 56 yards out. And that'll push the lead up to eight. 
Well, from a defensive perspective, though, I think maybe they're saying, hey, we did what we needed to do, kept this a one-score game. Yeah, without a doubt, because they were able to bleed some time off the clock, right? Put themselves in a good position, but it's not out of reach yet. Okay, being able to hold them to a field goal means that they do have a chance to come back and win this game. So here now, Lawrence and the Jaguars. Down by eight, less than 90 seconds to go. He's going to let it fly. Oh, a leap, and he will make the catch. And he's going to get this down near the 25. Throwing now, Lawrence. And a high throw there as this is knocked away, down to the ground and incomplete. Trying to squeeze it in there at this stage of the game. you got to take some chances. Nice job to knock it away, though. You're so right. Understanding where they are in the game, you've got to take that opportunity and maybe thread the needle. Unable to get it done there. And they are able to stop him, but he does take it all the way to the two. 23 yards, the final tally. This is where hustle and urgency come into play. I think you've got to get up there and spike it. First and goal, a touchdown and a two-point conversion here are musts. And he'll stop the clock with five seconds to go there on the spike. Second and goal, and they will try again from the two-yard line. They give it off here to the tight end. And he gets in just in the nick of time, so they get the touchdown they need. Now they need a two-point conversion to tie in. We'll break down the touchdown later. It's two-point conversion time. Go to your script, pick your play, and go for it. And he is in for two points. And barring some hijinks on the kickoff, we're going to be headed to overtime. Everything was riding on that two-point conversion, and they got it. They got it. They now have the momentum. Time really dwindling in this game. Now their big deal is make sure they get a good kickoff and don't give up anything big on the defensive end. And with time a factor here late, he'll just take it. Put it out to the 25. The Broncos onto the field, ready to start their next drive. Tie game, and barring something incredible here, we're likely headed to overtime. What I would do is either hand it off inside, or more likely I take a knee and let the clock run out. Because if I'm back there trying to throw, and a sack happens, the ball comes free, I can lose the game here. If I get to overtime, I can still win it. It's a little teaching moment here. Overtime rules. Remind us how this goes, partner. Okay, so in the past, we had sudden death. First team to score wins, but no longer. Now, if the team receives the ball, scores a touchdown, they win the game. If they kick a field goal, though, or don't score, the other team gets a possession. And after both teams get a possession, then we're into sudden death. First team to score wins the game. So the Jaguars going to get possession of the football first here in this overtime session as the kick is away. And no return here to begin the overtime session. That'll be a touchback. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. You think back to halftime, you know, they were close to being written off. They faced the deficit, and now here as we begin overtime, they're one drive away from a comeback victory. Think about where they started and how far they've come back from. And, look, you and I both know that when we talk with coaches, most of the time they don't say that momentum is something that factors into how they coach a ball game. Because they say, e Lawrence hit and the ball is free. like a running back going through the line. Quarterbacks have to be aware of protecting the football as well. He left it exposed that time, wound up having it knocked free, but fortunately had an alert teammate who was able to get it. 
and this is going to be incomplete. Well, their defense did its job. Now they're going to get the football with a chance to win it. And it feels like they ran out on the field, and right before they did, they told the offense, don't worry about this. We got you. Okay, we've got the situation under control. We'll get it back for you for a chance to win the game. And, boy, they did it well. It'll be a 44-yard punt, six on the return. And the Broncos take over, first down and 10. The Broncos onto the field, ready to start their next drive. Well, their defense did the job, got off the field without giving up any points. And now, Charles, all they need here is a field goal, and they get the victory. Yeah, this is the way I love overtime. I'm one of those really, really old school guys that like sudden death right from the beginning. But well, we've got it now because any points wins the game. On defense, get a safety, a pick six, fumble return. You can win it as well. So I'm really looking forward to this series and see how both sides play it. Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave them with a third and about three to go. They'll try and run it. Here's Gordon. And he'll be tackled about two yards shy of the line to gain. A one-yard pickup leads to fourth down. Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. And it's a pretty strong running there as he'll take this across the 50 and down to the 44. All right, so they got that one, Charles, against the center. And let's remember how difficult it is for the center because remember, he's got to snap the ball to put the play in motion. And sometimes you get that big guy on your nose. You got sometimes where he's coming at you at an angle. It's a difficult job for him to snap the ball and then execute his block. He's got a man. It's his tight end. That's complete. Certainly not the way that they were hoping that possession would end, failing to convert on four. And now they've got to make sure that they keep their poise, they keep their confidence. Just because it didn't work once doesn't mean if they get that same situation later that they shouldn't go for it again. The defense feels great, but the offense, they can't be despondent. On second and nine, Lawrence. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. And they'll need to get to the 35 if they want to keep this drive going on third down. Lawrence will throw. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. That's going to bring up fourth down, only a gain of two there. We can make this one pretty simple. Locked up all of his progressions downfield, forced to get it to his running back. But how about the way they ran to the football and knocked him down to force a fourth down? And now the Broncos will burn another timeout here. They'll be down to just one remaining as we step aside here in overtime. Here's Logan Cook now on for a very important punt here in overtime. And this is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. The Bronco. Goes onto the field ready to start their next drive. Well, this is a pretty rare situation here, Charles. You get in overtime, neither team coming through with even a field goal on their first drive. So now, sudden death with the time remaining. Next score wins. And now I would say that going at it might be a little bit easier for both teams now because they've eased into overtime. That first series, boy, everything on the line then. Now you've seen what a defense is throwing at you. You can make some adjustments. And all you need is three points to win. 25 yards that time. from the shotgun with Murray. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Now it's Wilson. 
Oh, he'll air this one deep for Judy. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. In overtime, you have to be smarter than that. A personal foul just can't happen. Have to have poise. So the yellow flag came out, and that leads to a new set of downs for this offense, first and 10. Following the penalty, here's Gordon. And he'll bring this one inside the 35. Just what you want on a first down run, call it eight yards, and it's second and two. That was a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. So this thing rests on the shoulders of Brandon McManus. This to win it in overtime. And he got it. The kick is good in overtime. He's able to split the uprights. And it'll be all smiles on Blake Street tonight. The Broncos have won it. Charles, normally when you see a group score this many points, it's a complete blowout. But instead, they needed every single one of those in this close, high-scoring affair. And Brandon, I'm still on the edge of my seat after that one because when you have that much scoring and it still comes down to a one-possession game at the end, that's not something we see very often. And in this case, these offenses, they brought it. The defenses, they're going to need some work going forward. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. So long, everybody.